Hello everyone, welcome back. So this episode, we're going to work on prioritizing our characters. Shouldn't be too long of one, uh, but what I mean is let's go ahead and fire up Unity here and take a look at how our characters show up. So we've got Raylene, and of course she's changing her expressions, but if I go ahead and enable, uh, let's say, Stella here. Notice Stella that shows up behind her. Now, what I'm talking about prioritizing them is declaring who shows up in front. And for the sorting order in the UI, whatever is drawn last is drawn on front. So by changing the priority, we want to change the sibling index in here. You could go through and set a, like a custom renderer to set sorting order, but since we're using the UI, it would make sense just to go ahead and change the, the default way that it's rendering them on screen, which would be, of course, the position in the hierarchy. Now, this is actually pretty simple. If we say that we create both Raylene and Stella, since Stella is created after Raylene, she's going to be drawn last, so she's going to be drawn on top. If I want to change that, then I can reference Raylene dot root and then say set something like set assembly index to something that would be after Stella. So we'll call that one. That way she'll be the second item. But you notice that she still shows up behind Stella because these empty objects, which are prefabs, they're still showing up as siblings. So obviously she's being set according to any objects, not just the active ones. And you can go through and just go ahead and delete them, but what if you have characters that are actually inactive on the UI? Like maybe they've shown up and then you've hidden them, uh, but you haven't deleted them yet. And they'll still show up there, but you don't want them to be active. So we want to exclude those and then move to the second one uh, that's on the actual active characters. So we only want to include the indexes of characters that are active and visible on the UI when we're setting priorities. So that's one thing that we know we want to check for first. Any inactive characters, we want to ignore them. So let me go ahead and remove that from the testing script. And let's go back to our character class and add ourselves a new function here. We'll make this public void and called set priority. And what we're going to take is an integer for our priority, which is basically just the sibling index. Now, as we're setting the priority on all these characters, we should keep track of what that actually is. That way, as we set the priority of different characters, it can still take into account the priority of other active characters in the scene. So changing one to a lower priority that's higher than a different character, but still less than the highest priority of the main character that we want at the very front, uh, we can do that as long as we cache the priorities of each individual character. So let's head up to our variables and just go ahead and make a public integer for the priority and just make it where we can publicly get it, but let's make it protected so that way only the character itself can set the priority directly here. And then back in the function, let's go ahead and just say that this dot priority equals priority. So we're changing it. And this, we can go ahead from here and we could say that root dot set sibling index to priority. But again, that's not going to take into account any of the active characters. And it's also not going to check for the priorities of the other characters that are active in the scene. So our best way to go about doing that is by, once we set a priority, we'll go ahead and reach out to the character manager and tell it to resort the characters that are on the UI. Now, let's go ahead and tack on a boolean here called auto sort characters on UI and just set that to true by default. So anytime we call this, it's gonna reach out to the character manager and automatically sort them. But we could tack that to false if we just want to update the priority but not sort anything. So let's go ahead and check if auto sort characters on the UI, and now we need something to do from the character manager. So let's come down to the bottom of that class and make ourselves a new function called public void sort characters. No parameters, just like that. And then in our character class, if we are auto sorting, then let's go ahead and call character manager dot sort characters. Okay. So the goal of this function is to evaluate every character that we have on the UI and then sort them in the proper sibling index or sorting order based on whatever each character's priority is. 
and we want to take into account every character that is not active in the scene, which means we're going to want to cache the ones that are active and the ones that are inactive. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a list of characters. And we're going to call this our active characters. Whoops, that's not characters, plural, that's just one. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this equal to a value from our character's dictionary, uh, but we're just going to look for the ones that are active and visible. So we'll use some uh, link here. We'll first reference our character's dictionary, and then we're going to grab all the values, which is all the characters. And then using link, we'll say where, so we can specify a condition, and the characters that we want to grab We'll just call them C. And what we want to look for is if the C.root.gameObject.active in hierarchy. So if this game object is actually active, then we want to grab it. And we'll just convert that to a list. Now we also want to make sure that the character is visible. So let's also tack on and C dot is visible. So that way we're looking for characters that may be active, but have to be visible as well. They can't be invisible. Because if you've hidden characters in your dialogue file that you're writing, and you know you have three characters that are now visible on the scene, but you technically have, let's say, five, just two of them are invisible, if you go and set priority to n number three for a character, which... You know there are three characters on the screen, that should take them to the front, but because there are technically five, just two are invisible, the sorting order is going to be out of whack. So we, we want to make sure that we only get the active and visible ones, that's why we're doing it this way. And now we need one for the inactive characters, we need a list for that as well. So let's go ahead and do the same thing, but call this inactive characters. We're going to set that to characters. And this time we're going to change where to accept. So we're going to grab everything except what matches something. And that something is going to be anything in our active characters. So grab all characters that are not active. And the next thing we want to do is we just want to go ahead and sort all of our characters by their priorities, all of our active characters, that is. So we can still maintain relational priorities when we're sorting them on the screen. So let's reference our active characters, and then let's call the sort function. And let's define a expression here. So we're going to be using lambda, and we'll be looking for both an A and a B value. These are representing the characters in our list, so it's going to be checking two against each other at a time, referenced by A and B. And so what we're going to be checking is if A, the first one, dot priority, and let's compare that to B's priority. So this is going to return us a number that defines whether A is less than or greater than B. So if we get a negative number, then we know that the first character, A, is less than the priority of B. And so we'll be sorting them. And so now we've got our sorted characters. But let's go ahead and concatenate the inactive characters on top of them. So that way we can get them all in the same list. So we'll, spay, so we'll say active characters dot concatenate are inactive characters and get them both into the same list. And now let's go ahead and apply this sorting order to the actual screen. But let's make a separate function for that because we're going to create another sorting function here in a minute to give ourselves some more functionality. Um, but for the time being, let's just go ahead and make it where we can set this on screen. So private void sort characters and we're going to take that list of characters that we've created. So a list of the character type for characters sorting order. This is the order of the characters we're going to sort them on screen. So let's call sort character and let's pass in the active characters. And so in our other sort characters list, um, let me add an S there. We're going to go ahead and start defining our sorting order. So we'll start with an index that is at the very bottom of the sibling index. That will be int i equals zero. Zero will be the first child. So then let's go through every character that we've got in this, in this uh, list here. And now let's say that our 
character dot root dot trans dot set sibling index and we're going to set this equal to i plus plus so we'll increment it on each step and set each character in the child array and now in our test character script you can see visual knob you can see Visual Studio wants me to create a character called Rainbow for some reason. I'm not sure what that's about. <laughs> but, um, what was I doing? Okay, yeah, Raylene. Let's go ahead and set Raylene's priority. She's created first, which means she's going to be behind Stella. So then let's go ahead and yield return new wait for seconds. And let's wait for one second. And then let's say that Raylene got set priority and let's set her to priority number one. That way she is in front of Stella. And when we run this, Stella's in front, but then Raylene gets sorted in front of her. And we can see their order. They are right here together and all the inactive characters are just in their own little group. Now let's go ahead and make a couple more. So let's get our guard character in here and then let's make a guard called guard red. And this guy is just going to be guard red. We'll set his color to color.red. So he really stands out. And then let's set their positions so they're kind of layering on top of each other. And as they're created, we can see they're all stacked on top of each other. And now I'm going to immediately say that uh, guard red, let's go ahead and set his priority to something like uh, 1000. So even when I set the priority of the other ones, they, they should fall below him, but they should rise above each other. So let's say that uh, Stella.set priority, I'm going to set her priority to 15. And then Raylene set priority. I'm going to set her to priority 8. And then guard set priority to 30. And these are just arbitrary numbers. Really, you'd go for something like whatever number of characters are on your screen. That way you can get them layering on top of each other. But if you specify a higher number, they're just going to stack on top of each other anyway. And then you would just have to specify a higher number in order to get that char another character to layer on top of them or change their priority to something lower. And we can see giving them their priorities, they are stacking on top of each other in the order that I told them to. Now that's great for setting the priority one at a time, but if I wanted to set the priority of a group of characters, then, well, whenever I'm calling set priority, we can automatically sort the characters on the UI, and then for every character, it's going to be calling that sort. So instead, we want something separate, which will allow us to set the priority of multiple characters at once, and then trigger the sorting on screen. So let's make a separate function in our character manager. Again, it's going to be called sort characters. So public void sort characters. It's just going to have a different data type to pass in. Instead of specifying no parameters, this time we're going to specify a string array called character names. And in here we'll be able to specify whatever characters we want, and the order of the characters that we specify will determine the order and how they are layered on the screen. Any characters that we reference inside of this array, I want them to draw on top of all of the other characters no matter what their priorities are. So that way, if I specify two characters out of a group, then those two characters will be brought to the front of the screen, and then just use the order that they appear in the array, array to layer on top of each other. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get all of the characters that are actually provided in this list of names. So let's create ourselves a storage cache for the character called sorted characters. And now let's go ahead and go through the list of our characters and find the ones that we have provided in this array. We're going to use link for this again, say sorted characters, and as we go through this series you'll find that um, link is something I, I like to use. 
It's a you don't really have to. You can use those for each loops, but sometimes it's cleaner and sometimes it's just a little more efficient. And I, I just like using it, so it's my own personal preference, but you guys do you. This is, uh, as long as you got the logic running, that's all that matters, right? So, let's check out our character names array. And then we're going to do something with each of the names in here. We're going to use the select function here, and we're going to try to get the character by that name. So, let's say that the name that we're evaluating here, let's uh, define the expression, and try to get the character by this name. This should return us a, um, a actual character class from the dictionary in one of the values. And then let's just for neatness separate these onto different lines because we're gonna stack these. And then let's use our where function here and let's check out this character that we just grabbed and as long as the character is not equal to null because Remember, if we can't get a character, it's going to return us nothing. So, we'll grab that, and then we'll just convert this to a list. And that'll get all of our characters, as long as they're valid in the dictionary that's been defined. And in the array that we're trying to sort from. And that means we just need to get the remaining characters, like we did above. The inactive ones, in other words. So, let's find all the characters that weren't specified in the array of names. So another list of characters, and we're gonna call this the remaining characters, because these are the ones that we have not specified. And this is going to be our characters dictionary, and let's grab every value in here, and then do another evaluation. So let's grab all of the values except the ones that are in our sorted characters array, the ones that we just grabbed a second ago. And then we want to go ahead and take all of these guys and just make sure that we maintain them in the order of whatever priority they had. So with the ones we define in the array, the order of them will determine their priority, but for the ones that we don't define, we're gonna use the priority they already have. So let's go ahead and say order by, and then for each of the characters, we're going to order them by their own priority. And then convert this to a list. And now we've got all the characters that we specified and the ones that we didn't. And now that means we can go ahead and sort these guys. So let's do the same thing we did above, and let's go ahead and concatenate the two lists together and then sort them on the UI. So let's call our um, our characters sorted characters dot concat our remaining characters. And now let's say sort characters as our sorted characters. So let's see how we can run this inside of our testing script. Okay, so instead of setting all of these priorities individually here, let's go ahead and set them through one command. So yield return new wait for seconds. Let's uh, wait for another second and then run this logic. And so we'll specify our character manager dot instance dot sort characters and then we're going to pass in a array of strings. So new string array and then all of the characters that we want. So I'm gonna start off just specifying Raylene and Stella, which means I want Raylene to show up on top and Stella to show up beneath them, but both of them to show above the guards, even though this guard has the highest priority in the scene at this moment. Let's see what happens here. It doesn't look like anything's happening. So why don't we try real quick just swapping Stella and Raylene and see if this is actually even doing anything. Okay, so yes it is. We can see that it is working. However, it's not sorting Raylene and Stella, who I specified, above the ones I didn't. Instead, it's, it's uh, prioritizing the ones I didn't specify over Raylene and Stella. So we need to change that real quick. Other than that, it's also sorting them in the wrong order. So it looks like we need to reverse that list. And that's pretty simple to explain too, because as we're passing in this a list, it's, it's going to go through and assign 
the first index as zero for whichever one's appearing first in the list. Since we're concatenating the inactive characters on top of the active ones, they're going to be later in the list. So really it's going to be starting with zero on Stella, who I want to be first, and then it's going to move to one to put Raylene, which would put her on top of Stella and on top of Raylene, on top of the other, on top of the other, till it gets to the end. Instead, we want to go ahead and flip that around. So we want our inactive characters to be first, and then we want this specified array to be reversed. That way, we get the proper order for whoever we're trying to prioritize on screen. So, in order for us to do this, let's go ahead and first, before we concatenate anything, let's say sorted characters dot reverse. So that way we get the right order for our specified characters. And then we're going to go ahead and concatenate our other characters. But we also need to flip that too, because we want our remaining characters to be concatenated or have the sorted characters concatenated onto them. So we could really just flip this and say sorted characters goes in here and then remaining characters goes here. But you know, I don't even like how this naming convention is, so I'm going to define a new list, which you do not have to do, and really, as far as memory goes, you'd be better off just doing this. But I tell you what, I can't look at things like this without it bothering me, because this is not remaining characters anymore, this is all characters, and that's just me. I'm terrible that way. But let's go ahead and say list character, and we'll say all characters equals remaining characters dot concatenate sorted characters dot to list. Oh, that looks better. That looks so much better. All right. I don't know if that's just me or if that's you guys too. But let's go ahead and continue on. So we reverse it and then we get all the characters and then we pass them in. So that should get us the right order. And there we go. Sure does. So we get Raylene on top because she was first in the array, then... I mean, uh, Stella, get my names mixed up. So Stella's first, then Raylene, and they're both on top of the ones that I didn't specify, even though Guard Red had the highest priority in the scene. But here's the thing. Here's one problem with that. In test characters, after we sort these characters manually, let's go ahead and say that uh, character manager dot instance dot sort characters and just sort the characters as they should be. Should maintain Stella and Raylene on top, but it doesn't. Instead, what we get is Raylene and Stella, they move back to the bottom, even though they were sorted on top. And that's because they're being sorted on top, but their priorities aren't actually changing when I'm manually assigning them. So Raylene and Stella, they're still much lower numbers than Guard and Guard Red. So, when we manually assign the priority of the characters as a group, we need to go ahead and update their individual priorities as well. And that means we just need to add a small bit of logic here to go through and manually update those characters. So let's start by specifying a max priority. We know any specified characters need to spawn or show up on top of all the other ones regardless of what their priority is, which means we need to find the highest priority of all the unreferenced characters and then use that as our starting priority for these new characters. So let's go int starting priority equals, and let's just check if our remaining characters dot count is greater than zero. If we have remaining characters, then we know that we can get whatever their max priority is. So let's specify uh, remaining characters, and then let's find the max value of, let's call it C for the character, and C dot priority. So we're going to find the character with the max priority, and then use that as the starting priority, as long as we have characters we didn't specify. If we have no characters that we have not specified, which means we've just said in our array, we've given a position to every single character, then we're going to start at zero and reset the priority for every single one of them. And now it's just a matter of looping through the list and assigning the priorities on each of them individually. And to do that, we can go ahead and call character dot set priority and set the priority here, which is going to be 
our starting priority. And on top of that, we're going to tack on i, the current index of the character we're working with, and we're going to add one on top of that. So they start stacking. So that way we always start after the maximum priority of whatever was specified. We don't want to take over someone else's spot. But then very important, we want to specify the auto sort characters on UI and make sure that that is false because we don't want to call sort on every single character when we're manually performing this operation. We want to set all the priorities and then go ahead and sort them all at once. And so by doing that, after we set the after we manually set the priorities for these characters in the array, if we try to sort them afterwards, they should maintain those new priorities. But actually, I made a slight mistake. We see that as soon as they get resorted, then the order that I specified is actually flipped because we haven't reversed it yet. So this code just needs to be called after we go ahead and reverse the sorted characters array. That way we make sure to actually apply the correct priority to the correct character. There we go, and we sort them. And when we call resort, they have maintained their priorities over these new characters. So now technically, Raylene, since Redguard is priority 1000, Raylene is going to be 1001 and Stella is 1002. And they're going to maintain those priorities and we'll just have to stack them using higher or lower numbers. And we can visualize this down in our sorting characters by just making a little debug statement, debug.log, and let's go ahead and say that um, our character.name priority is character.priority. And in test characters, now let's go ahead and do this one more time after we yield return new wait for seconds one, wait for another second, and then we're going to specify these guys in the appropriate list. So Raylene will be first, and then we'll have guard red, and then we're going to have guard, and after guard we'll have Stella. So she'll be in the back this time. And we, what we should see is the priorities get switched back to zero, for all of these characters and start incrementing to four. Okay, so at the very beginning, we get... Well, let me clear that out. It's a little hard to read. Let's wait. Here we are. Okay, so guard priority is 30, guard red is 1,000, and yep, there we go. Raylene is 1,001, and Stella is 1,002. And now they're about to resort. There we are, 30, 1,000, 1,001. And now it should be assigning every single one of them with this next command. But it is not. You can see that guard is still 30 and guard red is priority 1000 and Stella is priority 1001. They've just maintained, which means it's still seeing that we have unreferenced characters, even though we specified all four of them on the scene. So why is that? Actually, this is the result of an oversight on my part. If we go back to the character manager, back when we create the characters, we are logging their name to the dictionary. But there's a problem here. As we're adding the character to the dictionary, we're adding the character name. But that name is the actual name that was passed into create character, which could have casting data in it. And we have created guard as generic and guard red as generic. And that's the name they're actually logged under in the dictionary. So when we go to search for them to set their priorities in that array, it's not actually finding them, which means we do have those remaining characters. So it's keeping the old priorities instead of reassigning them. So what we should be doing here is saying info.name, which if we look back at that variable inside of get info, wherever that is right here, that name is being assigned as the first or the only name passed in in the character name field here. So if we specify casting for guard as generic, name is going to be guard, while the casting name is going to be generic. So there we go. That will log the character correctly, and we should see our characters reset their priority indices.
Okay, so they're at 1,000, so guard 30, then 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 2. Let's see it reset to 0. There we go. And now, if I specify all of them, we can see they all get put in the right order, and they restart back at 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. So with this system of priorities for your characters, you can control the depth and which characters layer on top of each other. You can show the ones to come up to the front of the screen when they start speaking, or set the depth of your crowd, or whatever you're doing. So this is just one more handy feature that'll make it easier to control what's going on in our screen. And that's it. So that's all we've got for character priorities in this episode. Next episode is going to be all about character animations for the, uh, the simple side of adding little quirky animations to our character root objects. So in the next video, I will see you there. Have a good one.